For over nine decades, Craftsman tools have been found in toolboxes and garages across the country. After all these years, they finally found their way home to Lowe's. Trusted in the hands of fixers, doers, and weekend warriors, you can be sure you can trust them in your hands too. Find an ever-growing selection of Craftsman mechanics and power tools, tool storage, and more in-store and online at Lowe's.com. So whatever tool your job demands, Lowe's has just the tool for it. Lowe's, the new home of Craftsman. You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, I'm Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. Can you believe that for 10 years? And today I am coming to you from the ATL Atlanta, Georgia, with just a little touch of Southern flavor. I know you guys love that. And uh, I can truly say that if you're listening to this recording, you better get ready because God has a specific word for you. I believe that your life will never be the same again after listening to this recording. How are you doing today? Well, uh, I'm doing really great. Uh, It has been an exciting week for us here in Atlanta. Of course, the Super Bowl is happening today. And this week earlier, I went down to partake of the NFL Super Bowl experience. It was so much fun. So many people from all over the world. So interesting. And uh, it was just something that I wanted to do. And, you know, just as a little note, some of you, in order to get out of your little rut, you may want to do something different, eat something different, go to a different place, drive to a different part of the city, you know, just to experience something different and expand your consciousness. Wow. Do I have a show for you today? My very special guest was a former professor and he taught um, the most famous class ever taught at Harvard, which is the science of happiness or how to learn to become happier or positive psychology. He had more students to attend his class than any other class at Harvard. So he's going to be talking to us about how we can be happier in our lives, the science behind it and how, don't tell anybody, the happier you are, the more success and money you have. So I know you guys are going to stay tuned. So stay tuned for that. Just a couple of announcements. Let's see the cruise. What can I say? You heard my guest last week, Tracy. She shared her experience, but really it's up to you. You have to make up your mind. This is something that I want to do. I'm going to do it. Uh, I said I was going to do something different in 2019. Set your intention. I think you still have time uh, to register for the cruise. We're going to Cozumel, Mexico. Uh, Just go to LOA radio network.com click on the cruise button and uh, if you don't have a roommate wow they can match you up using the law of attraction and you know the interesting thing is you're never in your cabin anyway you (laughs) except for to sleep at night you're always gone you're always busy so you know Why not give it a try? You know, set your intention and allow the entire universe. You know, God wants you to expand and to expand your experiences so that you can just grow. So would love to meet and connect with you on the cruise. Let's see what else. Oh, also, uh, would love to coach with you. While uh, you guys know I have a proven track record, I'm authentic, I'm real, uh, 20 years of working with clients. And, you know, I told somebody, I think 
I'm more inspired than my with my clients than they are with me because you know every week when I'm hearing people say this is what's happening Constance this is how I've changed or when I see it and some of my clients are having amazing extraordinary what's another word staggering results and that's what people really want. And and I'm here to help you create a compelling future, give you some strategies and behaviors. And if you're willing to make the investment of money, time and effort and work with me for a year, I guarantee you won't recognize your life at the end of a year. So check it out. Go to my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. I, for anybody who's really, really serious, I'll do a 10-minute chat with you just to see what you're looking for and to see if we're a match. How about that? Also, while you're on my website, uh, you may want to check out since it's February. Can you believe that? It's the love month. And if you're just tired of going on dating websites or you, you're tired of just attracting the same person, you need to get my book, Attracting Genuine Love and also the MP3, um, Attracting Love. I love that MP3, uh, Attracting Love that I did. I did it in a, a studio. Uh, for uh, a five-time Grammy winner, I was in his studio here in Atlanta, and the sound quality is just, it's amazing. Well, I, list, I love listening to myself on that, and so get that and really transform from the inside out so that you will uh, attract genuine love, and uh, while you're on my website, I now have the option of using Cash App because some people wanted to purchase products with that. So if you're interested in doing that or want to make a donation, uh, my cash app name is dollar sign Constance Arnold. And one of my millennial clients said, Miss Constance, you got to start using cash app too, along with PayPal. So here I am. <laughs> so I'm thanking you in advance. And then lastly, let's see. I want you to uh, hang out with me on social media. Uh, you can see me on Instagram. That's CL Arnold 11. I post all kinds of pictures. You'll see me and my dog and just kind of see what I'm doing uh, when I'm not on the air. And then Facebook is Coach with Constance. Twitter is LOA Constance. And YouTube. Stop this recording now, and I want you to go to my YouTube channel, Constance Arnold, and I want you to subscribe. And so I have uploaded some of my shows uh, that you probably have listened to or you might be listening to now. You can listen to on YouTube, plus you can see videos of me. I do one to two minute videos just giving you some really great tips around business and around what else around relationships just if God gives me just insight and revelation I want to share that with you and I think that is it so I'm just going to tell you in advance to open up your spirit open up your mind get out your pad and uh, when my guest comes on Anything that jumps out to you, that's the spirit of God speaking to you. And as I always say, all you need is one word from God, one phone call, one email, one shift in your thinking, uh, one change in your consciousness, and your life will never, ever be the same again. So can we just be in agreement that that's exactly what's going to happen to you today when you hear my guests. But we got to go to, to these commercials first. So everybody stay tuned and I'm going to be right back. Do you have an upcoming event where you need a dynamic speaker? Constance Arnold is a sought after keynote speaker that will enlighten the entire audience with proven strategies that are aligned with your organization's vision and mission. 
an experienced speaker for major Fortune 500 companies, Constance has entertained audiences with inspiring change. Constance would love to make your next event an extraordinary success. Contact her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. For the past 30 years, Constance Arnold has coached clients globally in the areas of relationships, wealth, and career. Her vast clinical background gives her extraordinary understanding of human behavior to accelerate manifestation. Every coaching client receives proven action plans to create change from the inside out. Constance will be right by your side. Talk to her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Well, everybody, I'm back and really excited about my very special guest today. My very special guest is Dr. Tal ben who has taught the largest course at Harvard, which was positive psychology, and the third largest, the psychology of leadership, attracting 1,400 students per semester, which is approximately 20% of all Harvard undergrads. So... That's quite remarkable. For the past 15 years, he's taught leadership, happiness, and mindfulness to audience audiences all over the globe. He's also the co-founder of the Happiness Studies Academy and the author of six books, including the international bestsellers, Happy Year and Being Happy. And I've read those, both of those. But today he's here to talk to us about his latest book, Shortcuts to Happiness, Life-Changing Lessons from My Barber. Doesn't that sound interesting? So, Dr. Tao, welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And before we started our recording, I was telling a doctor that I haven't been happy because I've been uh, trying to, with my southern accent, pronounce his first name. But... uh, (laughs) I just thought it was so funny. So uh, I I want to commend you. I did privately, but publicly for all of the work that you have and are doing all over the globe around happiness and mindfulness and uh, joy, et cetera. So share with our listener just a little bit of what brought you on this path of happiness and Mm. and the signs of happiness. And then we're going to talk about your new book. Sure. So actually what brought me um, to uh, study happiness was my own unhappiness. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, an undergraduate at Harvard studying computer science, and I found myself in my second year doing well academically, doing well in sports. I played played on the varsity uh, squash team. Uh, I was doing uh, quite well socially, and yet I was very unhappy. And, And I must say it didn't make sense to me because from everything that I had learned uh, and expected, you know, I, I, I should have been very happy, and yet, and yet I wasn't. And um, so, you know, I remember one very cold Boston morning, uh, getting up, it was my second year, going to my academic advisor and telling her that I'm switching majors. And uh, she said, what you? And I said, well, I'm leaving computer science, which is what I was studying until then, and moving over to philosophy and psychology. And um, there was a uh, uh, 25 more than 25 years ago, and um, and I've been studying uh, this this field since. Wow, why why do you think so many people are interested in happiness? Are we wired for it? Um, you know, we talk about it a lot. We are seeking it and pursuing it. What do you think that is? Yeah, I think so. First of all, yes, we are wired to pursue happiness. But something happened over the last uh, 50 years when uh, there's, be- there's been more interest in, uh, in happiness than probably ever before. Um, you know, there was always an interest in happiness. So Aristotle talked about happiness and flourishing. That was 2,500 years ago. Uh, Lao Tzu talked about it on the other side of the, of the globe. Um, you know, the, the, the Declaration of Independence talks about the pursuit of happiness. So people have been talking about it. But what happened specifically, uh, say, 50 years ago or so, was that uh, more and more people had the time um, to, to think about, about happiness, had, uh, you know, discretionary income to, to, to pursue um, something other than their basic needs. Um, 
And um, so that's one thing that happened. And the second thing that, that has happened, which is interesting, is um, uh, science. So more and more research, brain research, uh, research in the social studies, neuroscience has, uh, has started to look at, at the question of happiness. And today we have uh, more answers, scientific answers, and people are interested in those. Right, right. Because, you know, this is the law of attraction. And so people believe that, you know, once I manifest my soulmate, then I'm going to be happy. Or, or once I manifest that big mansion, just things outside of themselves. So does science show that once we have things or outward things that that makes us happy or does it have to be inward? Yes. Yeah, so um, what, what science shows is that um, part of the equation is certainly the uh, the belief you know and, and um, so there's research and I'm thinking back to research done in the 1960s by uh, one of my teachers Robert Rosenthal uh, in the classroom showing that when teachers believe in the students uh, students are more likely to do well in fact students IQ goes up when the teacher believes in the students ability to do well it's not just their grades that go up um, so be, be, the belief has a real impact on um, on uh, on reality. Um, the, there's more research showing that self confidence, the belief in oneself, is um, is the best predictor of actual success. Hmm. Uh, you know, so um, you know, going back to Henry Ford's quote, "Whether you think you can or can't, you are right." There's a lot of truth to that. Um, at the same time, there's, of course, and we don't need research for that, but, but, but hard work is important as well. Um, so belief is part of the equation. The other uh, part of the equation is, uh, is, is putting in the, the effort, the time. And um, they have to coexist because uh, belief without effort won't lead us to, to success. And effort without the belief uh, will actually not lead us to success. So what about people? Because I have so many people all over the world. Maybe uh, one person lives in a very affluent country. Another person may live in the bush, you know, maybe in a third world country. So geographically, does that determine whether or not a person is really happy? Mm. Um, so there's a lot of work, actually, over the last uh, few years on um, external circumstances and, and happiness. And it turns out that people... Um, attribute more to uh, to circumstances than is actually the case. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning people believe that external circumstances affect their happiness and they often blame the weather or, or the place where they live or, or some other circumstance for their happiness or unhappiness. And, um, and, and usually that's not the case. So of course in extreme circumstances uh, that has an effect on our well-being. You know, a person living in dire poverty uh, of course is 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 likely to to struggle a person living in a in a in a war zone uh, is is likely to be unhappy a person you know who's living in a place where he or she is oppressed is likely to be unhappy so external circumstances when they are extreme do affect our happiness but once basic needs are met and and, and when I say basic I mean basic uh, it's food it's uh, shelter um, uh, basic safety uh, essentially, then um, external circumstances don't matter, and you can be very happy living in in with relatively little. Uh, you can be happy, and you can be very unhappy when you have it all. Hmm. So, so we can choose in any exactly. moment happiness, or can exactly. we? Exactly. So, so this this is the main point that we have a choice. It, literally at every moment in our life. And again, I'm, I'm not talking ex extreme circumstances right. here. You know, a person living in, in Syria right now or, or in South Sudan, you know, it's very difficult for them, possible, but, but very, very difficult for them to choose to be happy uh, when their family is in, 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 in constant danger. Um, but other than these extreme circumstances, yes, we can choose. For example, I can choose right now to... Um, uh, to to focus on the things for which I can be grateful. Um, and um, a few things will happen when I focus on the things for which I'm grateful. One, I will be happier right now, more appreciative. Uh, two, I will actually um, become more successful, not to mention kinder and physically healthier. 
mm-hmm. as a result of choosing to focus on uh, on, on what it is that I can appreciate uh, right now. Uh, I can choose uh, to take a deep breath. And, you know, three deep breaths, uh, slow, gentle, quiet inhalation and exhalation can, um, can make a big difference in my physiological uh, well-being and, and through that, my psychological well-being. So uh, uh, before we get to your new book, so has all of your research and studying happen, happiness, are you, has that made you really extremely happy? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that a trick question? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no, it's actually, it's a, it's a very good question, an important question, because you see, um, I actually can't answer it. Am I happy or, or unhappy? Because there isn't a point at which one becomes happy before which one was unhappy. Huh. Rather, it's a continuum. So, you know, over the last 25 years, yes, I have become happier. Uh, but I do hope that over the next five years, I'll be happier than, you know, I am today. In other words, it's a lifelong journey. And it's a journey that ends when life ends. And, you know, this is the beautiful thing that we can continuously learn and, and, and manifest and, uh, and attract uh, more happiness to, to our life. So true. And, and I was kidding you uh, before we uh, started the recording. And I said I had been watching you on YouTube and on so- social media and listeners. I said to him, I said, you are so cool. <laughs> you should wear shit. He seems so he seems happy and relaxed and very uh, just very peaceful. It's, it's just the vibe that I really got from you. You know, so, thank, so it's thank, thank working. <laughs> thank, thank you for that. But, though I, I would like to just point out one mm-hmm. very important point. You know, one of the things that um, I, I talk about a lot um, is that um, perhaps the first step to it, experiencing happiness is allowing in unhappiness. Mm. Uh, because, you know, there, there are only two, two kinds of people in the world who don't experience painful emotions uh, such as sadness or anxiety or anger or uh, or envy um, or frustration. There are only two kinds of people who do not experience painful emotions. They are psychopaths and dead people. Uh. So, so if we experience painful emotions at times, it's actually a good sign. You know, it means we're not psychopaths and we're alive. Yeah. Um, and um, and it's important to 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 embrace. Uh, those painful emotions, because what happens when we don't embrace them, when we reject them and say something to the effect of, oh, you know, I shouldn't be uh, sad or, you know, why am I angry or I shouldn't uh, feel envy? When we have that should, the envy or the or the or the anger or the sadness actually intensify. Hmm. Whereas when we accept them and embrace them and say, OK, so I'm you know, I'm, I'm human. I talk a lot about the permission to be human. When, when I say, okay, I'm human and I experience all emotions and they're natural and, it, and it's fine, then they actually go away just as they came. And the interesting thing is that people who accept painful emotions in the long term are happier. Wow. Um, and they're more open to pleasurable, to joyful emotions. So, you know, unfor- unfortunately, but, you know, that, that's the way of uh, nature. Um, uh, pain is, is, is part of life just as is pleasure. So true. So true. Well, your newest book, Shortcuts to Happiness, Life-Changing Lessons from My Barber. And, you know, uh, I chuckled when I saw the title because females, we know that, you know, our hairstylist knows all of our secrets when we're sitting in her chair. So so uh, tell us about your barber and your friend. Mm-hmm. And then let's talk about some of the shortcuts to happiness that he shared mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. So, you know, the idea for for the book came when um, I was uh, I was going through a very stressful period and I was just before a trip, a long trip. And I I didn't feel like going on it. But, you know, I did. But I did need a haircut. Mm -hmm. So I went to I went to my to my barber to have a haircut. And after 20 minutes, you know, I came out not just with a haircut, but also feeling so much better. And I thought, I thought, you know, I, I should write a book about this guy because he really, uh, you know, helped me and helped so many people, um, uh, men and women, you know, kids and adults uh, ju- just feel better and, and dispenses wisdom uh, freely. Um, so I decided to write a book about him. And for two years, he didn't know about it. So hmm. the, 
the, the only person in the world who knew I was writing that book was, uh, was my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, no one knew because I wanted him to remain himself, to remain authentic, not to start thinking what, what should I be saying, but just to, um, to be direct and real. And, and he was. And, and over two years, I collected uh, real pearls from, uh, from him that I then uh, you know, transcribed and, and elaborated on in the context of uh, some ancient wisdom and modern research. Well, uh, how did he respond when he found out that you had written a book about him? <laughs> yeah, so I must say he was uh, he was shocked, um, <laughs> uh, but 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 very happy. You no, know, needless to say, I needed to 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 get his permission. I also, of course, told him that this is a co-authored book, uh, that you know we are both uh, um, you know the, the writers of the book, and and we share everything uh, fully. So you know he was uh, uh, very happy, and. Um, and he continued being himself, I'm glad to say. He hasn't, uh, hasn't changed. Yet. Wow. So share with listeners some of the shortcuts to happiness that you learned from your barber. Mm. Um, so so there, there are various things. The first thing, most important thing, is um, the emphasis on relationships. You know, the number one predictor of happiness is quality time we spend with people we care about and who care about us. So it's people who prioritize relationships. You know, I remember, you know, one of the things that I write about is, uh, you know, he was uh, cutting hair one day and suddenly um, he, he gets a, a phone call and uh, his friend was uh, was in distress. Uh, he, he closed uh, the salon down and went to see his friend. Hmm. Top priority. Uh, you know, when I when 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 I ask him, you know, what, what, what the most important thing is for him in, in his work um, he says it's the it's the relationships. It's spending time with uh, with people. And the interesting thing that happens, you know, when when you're getting your, your haircut, you know, you're you're usually not checking your phone. You're not on um, uh, on the on the internet or social media. You're there. You're present. And you know, and as you said, this is where, where you open up or you tell your life story, um, where, you, where you get real, real, vir- as opposed to virtual connection. Um, and so, so, what, so, so what about people who, you know, may be alone and don't feel connected? I mean, that really impacts their happiness. I mean, I've been there before where I was on the road traveling and didn't mm-hmm. really feel connected, was making a lot of money, but really was, was not happy. Yeah, you know, that's, um, that, that is probably the number one cause of uh, of uh, depression today, of unhappiness today, is is loneliness, and and the main cause today, and it's not the only cause, because you know the people have always you know uh, at times during their lives felt lonely, and again it's a natural emotion, just like sadness is. Um, but the number one cause of loneliness today is actually uh, social media. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I love social media. You know, I just met a, a friend of mine whom I haven't seen. He was my best friend when we were until the age of twelve, and then wow. our parents moved countries, and we hadn't seen each other for over thirty-five years. And and we met thanks to uh, thanks to social media. So you know, it's great in moderation. Um, there's interesting research um, by Eric Kleinberg. He teaches at NYU. Um, showing that the more time people spend on social media, the lonelier they are. So wow. even though it's social media, the lonelier they are. So in moderation, you know, half hour, hour and a half even a day, that's okay. But when people spend hours and hours and end and begin to evaluate their lives based on the number of likes uh, that, that they got, you know, we have a problem. Right. And so if someone is does not have relationships in order to... Uh, become happier, they need to become more social, reach out. What would you say to yeah. a listener? Yeah, you, you see, so here is the thing. So there was um, there's a very um, a famous study called the Relationship Study, uh, which is was conducted at Harvard and followed uh, Harvard students as well as community members for 75 years, basically from when they were 18 for 75 years. So for most of them, it was, you know, their entire life. And it found only one variable that predicted how happy they were throughout their lives and how healthy they were throughout their lives. And that was relationships, quality Mm -hmm. of relationships. The interesting thing about this 
is that it didn't matter what kind of relationships, meaning it could be for some of them work was was really central and they cultivated uh, collegial relationships. For others, it was uh, you know their their their, uh, their partner. For others, it was their greater family. For others, it was you know three BFFs, you know their best friends. It didn't matter, but they focused on relationships. So so yes, just as you point out, go out and and interact and and they interact with a family member, uh, with um, with friends from work, or or people you meet at a at a club. You know, it's interesting. The uh, consistently the happiest country in the world, or one of the happiest countries in the world, is Denmark. Huh. Yeah, I, we, we, I heard that. Why is that? Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that it's a good question. Many people say Denmark with its weather, please. But um, but 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 the reason is because in Denmark, ninety three percent of the population um, are members of social clubs. Huh. 93. So that could be your it could be, you know, active members, that is, of your church or your uh, golf club or your uh, or your uh, sports club, your whatever it is. It actually doesn't matter. But they're active members, meaning they go there on a regular basis and they interact with real people on a regular basis. And that makes all the difference. And 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 and, and we should follow suit. You know, we should do the same. You know, one of the reasons why happiness levels in the. Uh, in the United States, you know, uh, are are not not very high, and that has been the case for the for the last few decades, um, is because um, we're losing our um, um, we have the, the wrong priorities. Mm. I'm not against uh, success, you know. I'm not against hard work. I'm not against ambition. These are all great things. Uh, at the same time, um, we shouldn't neglect our our nears and dears, our relationships. So true. So share something else that you learned from your barber. Right. So, you know, my, my barber didn't go to a, a university. He doesn't uh, he doesn't have a, a high school diploma. Uh, however, he's extremely wise. And the reason why he's wise is because he's a lifelong learner. Mm. He's always reading. He's always, you know, watching lectures online. You know, this is one of the wonderful things online is that you can you can basically learn your whole life and still have plenty left to learn because there's so much material online. So he learns online. He goes to lectures. He, he talks to people. He listens. Uh, he's a lifelong learner. Now, the interesting thing about, about learning is that not only are we happier uh, when we learn, we're two more things. We are more successful. So today, in today's world, you know, when things are changing so fast, um, the people who learn are the people who ultimately uh, succeed. So that's one thing. And the second thing is that we're also healthier. So research recently came out showing that curiosity is associated with longevity. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? That is so, so interesting. Yeah. Um, and that is because, you know, if you think about it, when we learn, when we, uh, you know, we, we're actively interacting with the world, we're alive. And that contributes to our health. Well, you know, the Super Bowl is coming up this week here mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Can't and, wait. Um, and, and so I, even though I, I'm not going to the game, I made a decision that I'm going down to some of what they call the NFL experiences. Mm. You know, I'm just curious, you know, to see, mm. you know, what it looks like or what it feels like. I'm going to go down and throw some footballs. And so that's the, <laughs> the curiosity <laughs> nice. in, Very in nice. my life right now. And, and I can kind of see how just people who are maybe adventurous want to learn and grow, mm -hmm. Uh, that that does bring so much happiness. Yeah, and 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 you know, I, th I think this is a, a very important point because usually when people talk about curiosity, they mean oh, okay, so so I'll go to uh, lectures or, or or I'll read books. Well, curiosity encompasses the full range of human intelligences, which includes, for example, um, movement. You know, many people pick up dance. Um, later on in life. And that's a wonderful thing uh, to do. You know, it exercises different muscles and not just physical muscles, also cognitive muscles. So curiosity is about, you know, living life to its fullest. Oh, wow. Share another secret that uh, your barber shared with you that you mm -hmm. can share with the listeners. Sure. So, um, um, you know, there's, um, 
when where um the 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 salon where um where uh, Avi the barber cuts his hair is mm-hmm. uh, in uh, in Israel in uh, in a city which is just outside Tel Aviv and just outside that um that salon there is a synagogue mm-hmm. a place of worship and uh, one day I was having my hair cut and uh, an elderly gentleman in his uh, you know mid to late eighties you know walks in. And, and starts talking to the barber, to Avi, and he says, you know, um, the young generation, you know, they don't attend uh, um, uh, uh, services anymore. You know, they're less religious than they were, and it's such a shame. I don't know what to do about it. Uh, but, he says, uh, I love their technology. And then he takes out his smartphone, this elderly gentleman, and says, uh, you know, I have this app where uh, I have all these... Um, all, um, all the prayers and I have the, the whole Bible on this app and I have all the, you know, the books about the Bible and, and this is amazing. And then he says to the bar, to my barber, to Avi, he says, do you want me to download the app for you? And uh, so this is while well, Avi's cutting my hair. He puts his scissors down, takes this gentleman by his hand and leads him outside the salon. And then he says to him, I don't need an app. And then pointing to the sky, he says, I have a direct connection. Wow. Um, and, you know, I love that because I, I thought I immediately wow. thought I, I immediately thought back. First of all, I, I, I agree with him. I think we do have a, a, a direct connection, you know, whether it's to, you know, some people call it the divine. Some people call it the, the, the spirit or, or reality. We don't understand it, but. But I think you do, and I think you you appreciate it. You know, this is what this is how we manifest a reality because we do have some connection to something we don't know, something greater, larger than we are. And um, and he pointed to that direct connection, and it it took me back to a, an essay that I read when I was uh, when I was in college. So in in back in the eighteen uh, hundreds, Ralph Waldo Emerson gave a, a, a speech, a very famous speech. Um, um, where he said that um, we have, uh, and he was speaking at a, at a church, he said, we have a direct connection um, to, to God. This is why God sent his, his child, uh, his son, uh, to us, to show us that we have a direct connection. Now, that, that, that uh, uh, speech got him in trouble back in the 1800s. Um, but I think there is... Um, uh, a truth here which transcends religion, which transcends this kind or that kind of religion, which is uh, our direct connection to the spirit. Mm. That is so true. So so do you believe that people who, uh, I, I guess, practice spirituality or at least feel that they have a direct connection to God's spirit, higher power, that they are happier? Uh, there's no question about it. There is actually a lot of research on spirituality and uh, and well-being. Now, here here is the thing about about this. You know, um, religion certainly can provide um, a spirit uh, a spiritual life. It, it certainly can be the um, uh, the primary uh, generator of uh, of spiritual spirituality. However, it doesn't have to be a religion. If you look at the, you know, some of the dictionary definitions of spirituality, well, one of them is um, experiencing the sense of significance wow. of, some, of something. Now, we can, of course, and, and, and people who are religious experience it when they, when they think about God through prayer, but we can also experience the sense of significance uh, of something in our day to day. Uh, at work, for example, if, I, if, I, if I'm at work and I'm a, let's say I'm, I'm a banker, and um, I can look at my work as well. All I'm doing is, uh, you know, serving people and, uh, you know, giving them uh, money at the, at, the, at the teller or whatever it is that I'm doing. Or I can see my work as making a difference in, in, in people's lives. So I can focus on the significance of what I do. If I'm a teacher, I can say, well, I'm about disciplining those kids and keeping them in class. Or, or I can um, see my work as a cultivating the mind of the, of the young. You know, in, or, or, or in parenting, you know, we can we can see the meaning in our in our work. We can connect. And this is what Avi meant when he said, I have a direct connection at every moment. You know, you earlier talked about choice at every moment. We have a choice. Do we connect to the significance 
of what we're doing right here, right now. We have that choice. When we do, we experience spirituality. That 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 is so profound. And you know, um, you mentioned also in your book that a lot of times these shortcuts are right here in front of us, but we often miss them or neglect them. Why do you think that is? Mm. Um, you know, th- this this takes me to another uh, another of Avi's uh, lessons, and that okay. is uh, slow slowing down. Mm. Um, we very often miss what's right in front of us because we're going so fast. I mean, think about it. You know, when you are on a train, um, you, you can't really enjoy a, a flower that you go by because it passes you so fast. You have to stop and to look and to smell and to and to breathe. Um, and it's the same with life. You know, when we're on when we're on that race, um, then it's it's very difficult for us to to appreciate to to savor what's in front of us, what's inside of us. So it's this slowing down and, uh, and, 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 and taking time. And that time is, you know, whether it's with other people, by ourselves, in nature, um, reading a book, but just slowing down is uh, so simple and yet so important. You know, you also talk about how, how uh, happiness really impacts our business lives. Mm. You know, everybody is about online business, making money, etc. Ex- expound on that for us. Yeah, good. So, um, you know, this is a very important relationship between success and happiness. So many people believe that um, success will lead them to happiness. And I must say for uh, about half my, of my life, that, that is precisely what I believed. Uh, you know, I thought if uh, you know, I was I was an athlete, if I win that championship, uh, then I'll be happy. Or if I make, you know, once I started to work, if I make so much money, then I'll be happy. Or if I get into uh, uh, Harvard or get that job, then I'll be happy. That, that and that didn't um, didn't happen, and w- which is why I was so unhappy because it just didn't make sense to me. Um, but while success doesn't lead to happiness, the opposite is the case. More happiness leads to more success. Mm. If, if I increase my level uh, of well-being, even by a little bit, I'm not talking radical transformation here, even by a little bit, um, I will actually become more creative. I will become more productive, more engaged. Uh, companies that increase uh, their uh, employees' well-being um, actually become more successful. They become more profitable. Um, so happiness is a good investment. It's also a good investment for uh, for schools. You know, one of the things that we have seen uh, in in our programs is that um, when we increased uh, happiness levels among students, their grades improved. Not to mention the fact that school violence uh, went down and physical health improved as well. You know, we have um, we have a certificate program in um, in our happiness studies. Uh, academy. And what we see is that, yes, of course, uh, participants become um, uh, more successful. However, they become more successful, not because we directly talk about uh, success or emphasize it, um, but because they increase their levels of well-being. And as a result, they become more successful, uh, healthier, uh, as well as, by the way, kinder and more generous which is well, very much part of happiness. That is so true. And so if a person uh, can take a look and be grateful for what they do have, happy about what they do have, uh, then probably they can become more successful. Exactly right. Okay. Exactly right. And, you know, um, I started keeping a gratitude journal back in uh, 1999. Not because I saw any research uh, on it, but because Oprah told me to do so. <laughs> <laughs> and look, whatever Oprah tells us to do, that's uh, you, exactly, exactly what we do. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't want to argue with her. Uh-uh. So, uh, um, so, you know, so I've been doing it ever since. And then about three, four years later, uh, I came across wonderful research uh, by uh, Robert Emmons. He teaches in uh, California, uh, basically um, proving Exactly what Oprah said. You know, Oprah said, yeah, you'll be happier. She also said, uh, if you're grateful, good things will come your way. In other words, you will manifest more good things in your life. And actually, the research shows just that. 
And so when you write in your journal, uh, write your, in your uh, gratitude journal, I mean, do you write, um, I'm grateful for uh, this a, a great day, the, the snow outside in New York. I mean, do you really emotionally get involved with it when you write it down? How do you do that? Yeah, that's a very important point. I mean, and the key is, as, as you say, I get emotionally involved with it because, you know, it's part, I've been doing it you know, for almost 30 years. No, sorry, almost 20 years. Um, and uh, it's very easy to just do it, you know, as a sort of as a, ha- as a, as a routine, mm-hmm without any feelings. And, and it's important to bring feelings in. So, so here is what I do. So I write about um, things that are big and small. You know, I, every day I, I, I write, uh, you know, I'm grateful for God and for my family. Uh, and then I'm grateful for, uh, you know, perhaps a meal that I had or someone I met or uh, the way the light hit a building uh, outside my room. Um, so w- whatever it is, uh, I write about it and, and, and I focus on it. So when I write, for instance, about my, you know, my, my, my family, I, I think about uh, my family. I feel the love that I have towards my family. So it's mm-hmm. very important not just to do it as a mechanical, technical activity. It has to be emotional. So, so what are a few simple ways that listeners can boost their mood and quality of life mm-hmm. to bring more happiness in? Yes. Yeah, so if I, let me just go over a couple of things that I've already said and then uh, introduce uh, new okay. things. So, so the first thing is, is accept the fact that um, painful emotions and unhappiness is part of any life. Uh, accept it rather than, than fight it, because if we accept it, then it's, it's, uh, it's more likely to go away. If we fight it, it will intensify. Uh, second, quality time uh, with people we care about and who care about us. So we need to disconnect uh, from technology so that we can connect uh, to real people. And yes, by all means, use technology. It's wonderful um, in moderation. Um, Third, um, be physically active. Mm. Um, You know, the... um, there is um, a lot of research, of course, showing that physical activity is important for our physical health. Um, there is an increasing amount of uh, research showing the importance of physical exercise for our mental health. Uh, people who exercise regularly, who um, you know, even three times a week, you know, for half an hour to an hour, that can go a long way in contributing to our uh, both physical and mental health. Uh, so being physically active is uh, is key. Um, use your um, use your, uh, your your mind, meaning um, meditate, be mindful, whether it's uh, being mindful sitting and, and, and meditating on your breath going in and out, or when you go for a walk, you know, just stop and look at a, at a tree and, 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 uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, appreciate it, which brings me to gratitude on a regular basis, whether it's at night before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning, express gratitude for for what you have. You don't need more than a minute or two uh, to do it. Um, Use your imagination. You know, you talk a lot about manifesting. You know, visualization is, uh, you know, in between our ears, we have the most powerful simulator in the world. So if you can once in a while close your eyes and see yourself as you want to be, Um, whether it's uh, as um, tangibly successful, you know, if you want to become a lawyer or, or rich or, uh, or live in this house or, or drive this car, you know, imagine that uh, or imagine yourself as you want to be, whether it's calm or kind or loving. Um, our imagination is, is very powerful. Now, what's important when we imagine is not just to imagine outcome. It's also to imagine process. Mm. So there is uh, some lovely research by Shelley Taylor. She teaches at uh, UCLA on visualization, showing that when we visualize ourselves successful, it's more helpful to visualize the journey and the destination, the journey and the destination, not wow. just the, not just the outcome. So if you let's say you want to see yourself successful um, um, uh, in business, see yourself also working hard on the way to becoming successful. Hmm. Uh, and finally, uh, kindness and generosity. Uh, one of the best ways to increase our own levels of happiness is to make others happy. To give is to receive. 
And, and you know, th- I, I was thinking as you've been speaking, you're you're still so passionate. It comes through about sharing this knowledge with people. It's like you're still excited about it. You're happy about it. And you're so generous with it. Have you been told that before? Well, thank you. And and, and actually, actually, if I could share maybe a, a, an anecdote related to okay. that. Okay. Um, you know, so one of the things that I, I do at, uh, at my university is I work with new new coming teachers because, you know, often when professors come in, they can do great research, but they've never learned how to teach. So, so you know, so what I do is um, I, I work with them and, um, and, and help them in their teaching. And, and, and what they do is they go with me to lectures and they watch me lecture and we analyze it and then I watch them lecture and so on. And I remember one of my, one of the new uh, pro- young professors you know, was watching me and she said, you know, I've, I've seen you lecture about this topic and, and this is my eighth time watching you. And you're always so excited about it, even though you, you say the same thing, you know, don't tell anyone, but I even tell the same jokes over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> so, so she, um, so she said, how can you be so, so passionate when, you know, I've seen you do it eight times. I'm sure you've done it 80 more times that I haven't seen you. Mm-hmm. And I say, bec- and, and then I went to, to your point where, where about choice. And I said, you know, I have a choice every time before a lecture, what do I focus on? And here is what I focus on. What I focus on before every lecture, I close my eyes and I say to myself the following. I say, I have an opportunity here to make a difference in a person's life. I have an opportunity uh, to help someone become happier. What a privilege it is. And that's all I need. And I'm connected and I'm passionate and I do what I do. And it comes through. So so tell our listeners, we have about five minutes about the Happiness Studies Academy. And what is that? And can they become involved with that, et cetera? Yeah, that, th- thank you for asking. So, yes, I would love them to become involved. You know, this is something that I feel so strongly about. Mm-hmm. The, the idea for the Happiness Studies Academy uh, came to me on on. You know, one of my flights, when, 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 when suddenly a question came to mind, and the question was, how is it that there is a field of study for, um, uh, for psychology, there is a field for philosophy and history and medicine and, and education and law, you name it, but there's no field of study for, for happiness. Yeah, there is positive psychology, which is what, what I studied and, 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 and teach, but that's just the psychology of happiness. What about... Um, um, the, the philosophy of happiness. What about the history and economics and new neuroscience of happiness and theology as it relates to happiness and literature? You know, there's so, so many great thinkers throughout history. And we're talking ancient wisdom and modern research have, have contributed uh, to this field. And I, I decided to help create a field or rather an interdisciplinary field of happiness studies. And uh, so this was about five years ago, and, and a year ago, uh, my colleagues and I launched the Happiness Studies Academy, where people can come and, uh, and study this field from the perspective of uh, the different disciplines. Yes, of course, psychology, as well as uh, neuroscience and theology and literature and, uh, and economics and history. And, and they study it with the, the purpose of themselves becoming happier and then helping others, whether it's uh, students in school or uh, uh, colleagues and employees in the workplace or coaches, if you're a coach or clients, if you're a therapist or uh, or parents, if you're a child and helping themselves and others become happier uh, by learning from the great wisdom um, that, that, is, that is out there. And what we have uh, attempted to do and what we attempt to do is synthesize, bring together uh, that wisdom and apply it. So give our listeners uh, that website. What is your personal website? How can listeners uh, purchase your books, etc.? cetera? Yeah, so my, my, my personal website is um, talbenshahar.com. That's T-A-L-B-E-N-S-H-A-H-A-R.com. And um, or you can just Google my name or go directly to the Happiness Studies dot Academy. Happiness Studies dot Academy. It's been an honor. 
I, I've sort of been mesmerized just sort of sitting here listening to you. You have such a gift. And you have such a gift. And uh, you, I, I feel that you really break it down uh, so that, that anyone anywhere can really just grasp it and just really begin to think think about it and implement it into their lives. And I just thank God for the gift that you are to the world. Well, Constance, thank you. And thank you for all the work that you're doing, uh, manifesting happiness around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Well, everybody, uh, wow. Make sure you go to his website and get his books and, you know, just participate in his Happiness Studies Academy. Uh, it would be life changing for you. And as I say every week, you may not know it or feel it, but you are surrounded and supported by a loving God or spirit. And I want to say to you that I want you to just affirm every day that 2019 is the beginning of some of the best years of your life. Make it a great week. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com.